So here I am in the garage, and there's two RX-7s, no Diablo, which actually is kind of bothering me right now. She's hidden safely at the office, but I just got back from Orlando um, doing an auto show there, and the weather was what you a Diablo deserves to be driven in, not crappy Michigan weather. So I want to make a video with her, but I'm not going to be stupid and like do like... Um, you know, like salty snow videos, that's not fun. I want to keep that car beautiful. That's what you guys love about it. And uh, so I'll work something out there. But for those of you asking me when my next video is coming out, this is just a real quick impromptu one um, about this. But uh, my next business one will be out before the week is over. So look at this. This is the three-rotor engine where everybody else is making, trying to make these engines work. I am the dumbass who's taking a working one and tearing it apart for no reason. Uh, for those of you who are kind of aren't familiar with cars or you know the basics, that's the um, upper intake manifold that might look a little, a little bit more familiar. So, what three things are needed to get this engine moving? Gas, air, and spark. And I just want to give you guys the quick, even if you guys know cars really well, it's neat to see it on an engine that I think only, what, 4,000, 6,000 of these were ever produced? So this is a damn rare engine, especially in the United States. So, air goes in, kind of comes in over here. We'll forget that there's a turbocharger, but air comes in through here, goes down through these holes. Think of it this way. One, two, three, four, five, six. 750 horsepower of air and everything, of magic, goes through all six of those holes. That is insane. It blows me away to think that that much horsepower comes from like small parts that are like... Well, you saw the transmission. You see how small those things are. 750 horsepower. Anyway, so the air goes rushing through here. This is the fuel system. For those of you not familiar, fuel comes from the back of the car generally, um, almost always, filtered with those that little blue thing there, two lines. They come up. I have it tucked in over there and tucked over there just because I'm going to pull the engine. But they come up. They go over to these rails. These rails, as you can imagine, are pressurized. And then think of these little white things, those are the injectors hidden under there. Those little injectors are electrically opened and closed. So it's just kind of like a floodgate. Always pressure behind it, and those little things are like, okay, let it go. Stop, stop, stop. Okay, let it go. And they do it at milliseconds at a time. Um, you'll hear that called pulse width or injector duty cycle. If it's 100%, that means that that injector is just flowing 100% of the fuel, 100% of the time. You can't flow more fuel because you know, your, your fuel pressure is only at a certain amount. So basically, you've fucked your system and your, your injectors are full. You can run your car temporarily like that, but um, that's stupid to do. So air, fuel, and then you're saying, Rob, I got you. I'm ahead of you. There's your spark plugs. And you are wrong. Um, you're right, because the guys that designed the car, um, for whatever reason, used these things here. And we'll talk about that in a second. But they required twice as many spark plugs as the car actually has. And it does not run without these. If you notice, these are just literally, like, <laughs> sparking inside this block doing nothing. My like That's like my pet peeve about this car. But there are six of these. And there are six real ones as well. It's meant for like a 12-cylinder engine. This is a technically, I mean, equivalent to a six-cylinder, if you think of it in many ways. Anyway, these things, see how there's two of them for each one of these things? That's where they messed, messed up or got the wrong part or had to work it that way. I don't know. I don't think I'm going to question it. But those things are just like when you rub your socks on a carpeted surface and zap the shit out of your friends. Really high voltage, low amperage. That's what these are kind of creating. Same thing. And they just send that spark to a spark plug. So half of them, for whatever reason, are not connected. Um, in a rotary engine, you have two spark plugs per rotor, which is, seems completely confusing. And even after 10 years of owning rotaries, it, it makes sense, though. Because see those two holes inside of there? And for reference, the spark plugs go in both over there. Oops, and you can see, and you, if you're, if you're going to guess, Rob, the bottom one is more important, you're right, the bottom one's actually considered the primary, the top one's considered a secondary, or leading, trailing, whatever you guys want to call them, leading and trailing spark plugs. Um, it's because the rotor's shaped really weird. Pistons usually only use one. 
So, um, you know, those are the three major parts of this engine. And, uh, like I said, I'll be working on some other things, but I'll, I'll keep, I'll keep, like, my build thread going on about what's going on with this car in between all of my fun business and hopefully Lamborghini video. I'm really feeling it, but I, I, you know, I'm going to put some of my better scripts to use. So, thank you guys, and I will talk to you soon.